Hey everyone. In this video, I want to talk about management or control plane versus the data plane. What are they and really why do I care? As always, this is useful. A like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated and hit the bell icon to get notified of new content. Now I can think about Azure. Azure is this cloud service. And we often hear about the idea of a control plane and a data plane. So I can think about, well, I'm gonna divide up this cloud. And I'm gonna have a control plane, and then I'm gonna have a data plane. Now, when I talk about Azure, you often hear about the Azure Resource Manager, or ARM. And all of the resources we leverage in Azure are defined in these resource providers. Now, when I perform many, many different types of operation, maybe I'm creating a resource, I could be modifying a resource, I could be deleting a resource, I can use many, many different types of tooling. I can use things like uh, PowerShell, the CLI, the Azure portal, I might use some kind of uh, endpoint via a RESTful endpoint just automatically, just as part of my code. But when I'm talking to this, all of these operations are going through the Azure Resource Manager. So that has its own endpoint. Now, when I interact with this, I talk to this management dot um, azure.com. Now, I may do a RESTful call directly to this endpoint. I might use something like the Azure REST API that talks to this endpoint. But all of these operations, no matter which tooling I'm using, when I'm creating, modifying, deleting resources in Azure, it's going via the Azure Resource Manager. And that is really governing that control plane. And it's the control plane that give us a lot of the features that we leverage. I can think of things like policy, and that's enforced here. So policy, role-based access control on who can perform crates of this type of resource or modify or delete or read the attributes of them. When we think about locking resources, at the subscription or resource group or resource level, that's all happening through the control plane. If I look at the activity log, so the activity log is tracking control plane operations. So I can think about when I'm interacting with ARM, I'm interacting with the control plane of whatever I'm doing. Now resources, will have both a control plane, so the Azure resource object, and then likely there's also data plane operations for it as well. For example, if I think about something simple like, let's just take a storage account. So a storage account, I create a storage account, so I'm creating it via the control plane. I might set permissions on who can see that object, modify that object. But when I actually go and interact with blobs or a table or a queue, well, they live in the data plane. It has its own endpoint. Now, this endpoint will vary depending on the service. The tooling I use will be different but I'm not using management.azure.com when I want to interact with the data. And the data plane, well, very commonly, it has its own role-based access control. It may use Azure AD, like the control plane. It may use its own internal mechanisms, like a SQL database used to have its own idea of users, but now we can use Azure AD accounts here as well, but it's still at the data plane, it's a separate set of permissions. Maybe it uses an access key. It has its own idea of logs. Here you might use um, things like diagnostic settings to actually within the resource go and send data to other places. 
So we have this split of, hey, control plane through ARM, then actually interacting with the data. Same for a SQL database. Hey, there's things I can perform with the control plane, but the actual tables and the data that lives in the data plane, Azure Key Vault. Hey, there's the idea of the object at the control plane, but the actual secret, the actual key, the actual certificate, well, that lives in the data plane and that's governed by a different set of permissions. So this is probably easier to actually see it. So if we jump over for a second. So let's take a look at a, a couple of different types of resources. So a really easy one is that storage account I just talked about. Now realize there are things I do at the control plane. I could say, hey, go and look at the configuration, for example, of my storage account. And I might go and change certain settings. I'm interacting here at the control plane to change these things. If I look at the activity log, then what I'm gonna see is information related to the control plane of this storage account. Let's expand that a little bit longer. I'll see interactions that was something I triggered through the control plane, but I'm not gonna see data plane things like, hey, I wrote a blob or I did some specific thing down into this storage account. This is taking a long time for some reason. There we go. So I can see certain interactions that were through the control plane. Things like, hey, locks, um, listing storage account keys regenerating storage account keys. They're things that I did through the control plane. If I look at access control and look at the various roles I might have, there's things like storage account contributor. So if I looked at the actual permissions, and here's an important point, actions. These are control plane actions. Now you'll see there's things listed about the different resource providers. The one I'm gonna focus on here is the storage resource provider. And then there are certain things I can do at the control plane. Now remember, the control plane doesn't give me access to the data inside, but through the control plane, I have a permission to list storage account keys. Well, I can use the storage account key to talk to the data plane. So in this case, although the data plane is separate from the control plane, if I have the right permission at the control, hey, show me the account, the storage access key, I can then use it to talk to the storage endpoint to get permission to the data. If I was an owner on the resource, maybe it does integrate with data actions, I could give myself permission at the data plane. So they're completely separate, but if I have the right permissions on the control plane, it may let me get information that lets me go and interact through the data plane. That's why we're always really careful about who we make owners, because they can go and change aspects um, of that object, maybe give themselves additional permissions. So I can think about, well, yeah, this is a very, very common pattern. We have all these control planes. So storage accounts have blobs and files and queues and tables, databases have tables, key vaults have those secrets, etc. Now when I wanna interact, remember, with the data, I'm not using ARM at that point. There's a separate set of endpoints for whatever that service is. If we went and look back at that storage account, for example, if I want to actually interact with a blob or a queue or a table, well, there are endpoints. I can actually go and look at, it shows me the endpoints over here. So these are the data plane endpoints I would talk to. And here I can see, okay, if I wanna to talk to blob, well, it's the name of my storage account, .blob.core.windows.net. It's a separate endpoint to interact with that data plane. The same thing would happen to a database. It has a certain endpoint. So they have their own. And then likewise, they have their separate authorization. Now, a storage account is actually a great example because yes, I can use an access key. So if I had the right control plane, I can dump out the access key. But Blob also has, and so do some of the other services, 
Azure AD integrated authorization. So I can actually give Azure AD user accounts or service principles, managed identities, permissions. So if we go back to the roles, and this is where you can really see the distinction, there are actually some roles where you actually notice it has the word data in them. And the two key ones we really have today is blob data and queue data. But you'd also handle it as a, a table data down there as well. So if we look at one of these roles, let's look at contributor. Now it has some actions, remember, at the control plane. So it has some. Really generate a user delegation key, patch, delete, git blob container, list of blob containers, put blob container. But then it has data actions. These are things at the data plane. And now I can actually read blobs, write blobs, delete blobs, add blob content, move blobs. So this is giving me the permission to now at the data plane interact. And that's that big data actions. That's what kind of separates these. I would see the same thing if I looked at, for example, an Azure Key Vault that was configured to use role-based access control instead of the Vault Access Policy. With the Azure role-based access control, once again, there's the standard kind of roles I can set at the key vault resource itself. But then, and let's actually look at a bit more interesting, at a per item level, so at the data plane level, I could look at a certain item. And if I look at the access control and the roles that are available to me, well, suddenly I have a key vault secrets officer, a key vault secrets user. And once again, if we just looked at one of these, it has nothing at the control plane, but it has things at the data plane. So this role, hey, I can get a secret, I can list secrets. So this role is given the ability for whichever object, in this case, a particular secret is applied to, I can list it, and then I can get the value of it. And obviously I could grant this role at the key vault level if I wanted to, to see all of the secrets or even at a resource group or subscription, it's inherited just like everything else. So I have those separate sets of permissions available to me. And so that's really the important part here. Realize when we talk about control and data plane, hey, potentially, if I have the right permission at the control plane, I can influence what I could do at the data plane as well. That's why we're very careful about just enough administration. We only give the permissions you absolutely need, but they are very different. I have the control plane, I'm interacting with the ARM resources, then to actually interact and use, is really the key point, the resources functionality, I go via the data endpoint and I'm interacting at the data plane to actually leverage that. Now sometimes things might kind of flow over. For example, some technologies will let me use policy and I can actually use policy inside the resource itself to do certain things. You, you'll see that Azure Kubernetes service has gatekeeper interactions so I can use Azure policy but it will then go and use the gatekeeper inside the Kubernetes cluster to impact things directly on that service. So I can kind of prove a point and I can, I can show this in action. One of the interesting things we can do is we can do a lock. So when I lock, I can say things like do not delete or make it read only. So if I applied a lock on a storage account, what do we think that's going to do? Because the lock is at the control plane only doesn't impact the data plane. If I want to do locking at the data plane, I have to use a data plane piece of functionality. For example, there's things like immutable blob to actually lock content of a storage account. But a lock at the control plane has no impact on what I can do to the data. So let's prove that point. So if we go back over, what I'm gonna do is go back to my storage account and we'll put a lock on it. So we'll just go down and we'll create a lock and we'll say it's read only. Type is read only, you can see here. And I'll click 
OK. At this point, I can't change anything at the control plane. So if I try and say secure transfer is required and hit save, it errors. It errors because, hey, there's a lock on it. Please remove the lock and try again. But if I actually go and look at one of the services, let's say blob, and I'll go to images. Now, first thing, notice I have the authentication method. I have it set to Azure AD user account. So I'm using that data plane set of data actions to actually interact. I could, because I have that permission, switch to the access key. So now I'm using, <laughs> notice here, you do not have permission to use the access key to list the data because why? It's got a lock on it. But if I didn't have the lock, I could use the control plane to list the access key and then use the access key to interact. But my lock is read only. I can't perform an action to list it. So for right now I'm using, go back to the Azure AD, I'm using my Azure AD data plane access. Because you saw access key is part of the control plane to actually list it. That would be a control plane operation, which it did not let me do. But I'm now gonna interact with the data plane. I wanna do an upload. I'm gonna upload an image. Remember it's locked, it's set to read only. Upload, and it works because this is a data plane operation. Likewise, I can delete it because this is a data plane operation. So hopefully that really kind of shows a point there about what these things are doing. There's a big difference between that control and data plane. When I use features through the control plane like a lock, it's only impacting the control plane. I can still carry on doing things through the data plane. So it's just a nice example maybe to bring all of those things together. And that's really it. That was the whole point of this video. So just explain the difference between them. So the control plane is things about the management of the resources. And then the data plane is really the use of them. They have their own sets of endpoints. That's how I interact and leverage them. And pretty much all Azure resources kind of have that split between that control and data plane. But understand they have separate for most of the time role-based access control. For those that are Azure AD integrated, you'll see data actions in the role. They're things via the data plane. Locks only apply to the control plane. You need to do something at the data plane if I need that level of functionality like immutable blob and there's other things I can do with database services and more to actually interact with that. So that's it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Until next video, take care.